Hey, it's me again at Okocha Star. Uh, the next episode of uh, Five of the Week is a continuation of our last week's off-season special called Four of the Week, uh, where I, Danger Golding, a Cryptic Pancake, and Robotastic talk through the NCAA awards. But unfortunately, uh, I had to cut this into two parts, the whole discussion into two parts to keep it tolerable and listenable throughout. I won't guarantee it will be, but I sure hope you all enjoy. I'll catch you right after... well... For the listeners out there, uh, if we seem to slander some players you hold dear, some players you're actually the user for, don't worry. They absolutely mean it. <laughs> Fuck them. <laughs> I do not condone bullying. These players and teams, possibly teams, will be split to two categories in our discussion. Those didn't, those who didn't do enough or we did not see enough from or of in comparison to preseason expectations and those who were outstanding and exceeded their expectations the not enough category i'll repeat is not there to slander players at least on my behalf uh, as typically the players development has started because of poor team chemistry or then just being unable to take a leading role or in some cases that role falling to a completely different player Some some guards, uh, point guards, shooting guards. Who did you uh, think underperformed this year? Who did you not see enough development out of, enough scoring out of, enough creating out of? I think I'd uh, point out Demetrius Marquis Xavier for the Gators. It's the we kind of expected to see a step up from this season yeah that, that extra boost hasn't really happened he improved his points a little bit um, but he's still quite a one-dimensional shooting guard side shot not great at free throws and uh, start to bring a little more to the team by this point in his career did he actually improve his scoring in uh, at least as I'm watching the index, it says last year he averaged 9.9 points per game, but this year only 7.1 as Wait, the starting the point guard. Hey, I clicked on the wrong person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that must be it. So, <clears throat> for Dimitris Marquis Xavier, DMX for short, he went down in points. Uh, up in rebounds, actually, averaged the same number around the same number of assists and uh, well a couple of people were picking Gators as a tournament contender and a all in all a good team this year but uh, definitely there was there was something left that we were waiting for something all season they were below 500 and did not meet our expectations, in my opinion. For me, I kind of have a, probably a bit of a controversial pick for uh, my underperforming point guard. I'd actually put Damian Wade mm. from the Tar Heels. Like, if, if you look at his numbers from last year to this, he only averaged one point more, uh, what like zero point six rebounds more, and roughly one assist more and his shooting numbers also didn't really change and for the fact that the team was so good i feel like they probably could have uh or they wanted a bit more production from him see i'd take the uh slight opposite view to that that they from his counting stats haven't really gone up that much he's increased in efficiency almost across the board with his, his free throws staying about the same but 
is a three point percentage going up from 40 to 42 and a half percent. The assist With turnover is being much better. Went up by 0.2. Look worse. His total field goal percentage only went up by 0.2, though. Yeah, but his three point percentage went up more. Yeah. As well. And his true, although his true shooting percentage was about the same. So. Yeah, true shooting went down. <clears throat> When your when your team's top of the league, you're clearly doing something right. Yeah. And whether I that's like... more ball movement and yeah, and everyone have a turn with the ball rather than relying on one star player, then whatever works for them. Yeah, I mean, I still uh, think he's going to be a good prospect. I just think that for where he is at as a player, uh, he kind of underperformed for a 250 TPE player. Yeah, definitely in comparison to some other star guards that we've seen, like obviously Eddie Donovan. And I mean, uh, Tyrone King still put up. Yeah, playing alongside Kings, yeah. So uh, for Damian Wade to improve his three point percentage, even though it might seem marginal, from 39.6% to 42.6%, it's actually a nice improvement and puts him in the upper echelon of long range shooters in NCAA this year but that came at a cost of less attempts and the, the uh, three point percentage might be boosted seeing as he had less attempts obviously lower volume higher efficiency but if the volume grows maybe the efficiency wavers off a bit uh, um, I have to look. Robo, you have you, you. Prime you, doesn't care about gods. Uh, as well, he as only he cares should. about buckets <laughs> and Ivanchic <laughs> and Ivanchic. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, but uh, there were there were not that many shooting guards to mention. Uh, well, yeah. the, the, they're all kind of the same. Yeah, maybe it suits the purposes of this uh, freelance discussion better if uh, don't start naming people like Big B Johnson of the Gators. I never heard of Big B Johnson before. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <Is that>? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like uh, looking at underperforming uh, players. What list are you guys looking at? Uh, uh, the I it's list. it's in the Discord discussion. Here I I can. I put a link to it in. Yeah. Wait, no, I found it. I found it. I found it. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> the most underperforming. Jeez, I've been looking at random pages this whole time. <laughs> 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 I didn't even know there was like a stuff for this. Mm. Uh, no worries, but on, on that note, uh, a lot of the underperforming players this year were just. Uh, how do you say it? Prisoner of the environment. Like, um, mm. they they were on poor teams, and their uh, plus minus net rating, even efficiency sometimes was poor, but it was due to the team as a whole performing under expectations. As we typically have most starters playing above 30 minutes per game, uh, if you're starting, you're on and off the court metrics comparison does not mean much because you're playing for most of the game anyways yeah. so the underperforming we could note out as well Jad McPherson because uh, Jad was the player who actually inspired the first episode of this program Jad looked very very gifted going into the season Still is very, very gifted, but has been overtaken by some other guards in the league. And uh, the Spartans had a difficult season as a whole, uh, finishing with, I believe, 41 wins. And uh, Jad not really growing as the leading option creator from last year or the last offseason. So, of the guards. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, I think uh, he was he was uh, great at the start of the year, but as the year went on, all the other 
guards, they improved their scoring a lot and he kind of stayed the same. He's averaging 15 points or something. Yeah, he actually went from 11 points per game to 15 points per game. From 8 assists to 9 assists, which was good for like 4th in the league? 2nd in the league, yeah, actually. So, it's not a lost season per se, but the, the team performance, uh, you really have to take that into account when your team goes 500 basketball throughout the year. And, you're and you have you get it. Yeah, and you're supposedly the star prospect. At, Note, this is my opinion <laughs> in the last preseason, but still. Uh, some outstanding guards. Who do you have in mind? There was really a lot of good guards this year. Yeah, it's a. This is a year with just a super, super heavy, uh, like, guard class. Like the draft boards and stuff like that. There's only really. A few high quality bigs. Yeah. <laughs> There's it's been all, like wingmen. Pretty much all the top teams in the playoffs have had a <laughs> their roster, so it, there's so many to talk about, really. All right, I'll start um, the discussion with uh, Jaron Flores, who we already mentioned. Uh, is uh, Jaron Flores isn't any one of the three guys who were feuding <laughs> in the chat earlier, is he? Uh, no, they're, so. they're Jeffrey Murphy, Kendall Battle, and Kuzi. So, yeah, no, Jaron yeah, Flores thanks. is fine. So, Jaron Flores, we touched on him in the earlier episode when he was around 70 or 80 TPE, but was averaging, I think it was then 5.8 assists per game or something of that note. Finished the season with 9.4 points per game, 4.7 rebounds, 7 assists, and a steal per game. Also stroking it from downtown, 32, well, 33% three-point percentage, which is decent for a point guard, freshman point guard. What are your opinions on the Kentucky Wildcat? They need to seriously sort out what's going on with their locker room. Yeah. There's like two people leaving. Oh, they're, they're not very organized. They don't seem very organized or in sync. Word on the street is that the two players leaving are going to the Virginia Cavaliers. Oh, I thought you were going to say Mountaineers. It's like, yeah. Oh, well, congratulations to possibly, allegedly, the Virginia... Uh, did you say Virginia? Virginia Cavaliers. Yeah, so the that's Virginia like, Cavaliers. That's Kendall West Battle. Virginia and Virginia. It's Kendall Battle and Kuzi, uh, so that's a shooting guard and a power forward, um, <clears throat> both heading to a, a different team in transfers that we don't tend to see too often in the NCAA. Uh, a similar situation this happened to those people that have been around a while a couple of seasons ago when people were transferring out of Kansas to Florida. <laughs> so it's really going to be a interesting thing to see if the Virginia locker room can can adjust to two new players and how well the Kentucky Wildcats can bounce back from having two of their probably best players they've had in a while to, to come through. This works out um, well for your bet, right? Well, for <laughs> my <laughs> bet next season of Deity, who has confirmed that it's still on, so... They're backing out of it. It's kind of a shame. I'll get my name proclaimed in all sim friends. I really thought Kentucky would be a good team next season because they'd have three people that can uncap and like within the first week of next season. Yeah, they're in but... this weird mix of teams that finished at near the bottom. Where there's four teams all on 33 wins. Yeah. Have one of the or at least had one of the stronger young squads with quite a lot of young talent looking mm. to make that next step. Who so, do you think is going to win next season? Well, West Virginia Mountaineers, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say yeah. it now. So Matt, I think uh, uh, a classic... One-two punch in the guard spots of Creed and Warrington. 
hopefully. No, I think like West Virginia is going to be really good. But if you look at the Arizona team, they have a full squad. They're, they're worst players at 194 right now. I'm not concerned at all. <laughs> like, by the end of the off season, they will all be uncapped. No, Hot Plan and well, the Paris Ethius or whatever. Pararexis. Will they be? Are they going to the draft? No, they would have already no. been taken out. Ooh. Every everyone you see on SBAO with uh, over 199 now are CC39 draftees or then just yeah. uncapping. For oh, the upcoming yeah, season, yeah. So, yeah. Wildcats could have a, a really big season ahead of them, obviously. With yeah, repeat of Duke last year. One thing to note is that a lot of these players look like fillers. <laughs> from off, off the top of my head. Yeah. Toyo I mean... D. Nada is both of the Parahexis players are Thomas Sankara, I think, is. And yeah, Barry Allen Taylor. They look like a big super team, and of course, these are obviously good players. They may not have the uh, star power that might be necessary. Yeah, or neither will it's they. Neither will they be claiming the max. Probably not every week, but uh, thanks for pointing this out. It's certainly interesting. Not looking at the. What's the average DPE? Something around one nine nine. Yeah, it's yeah it would have to be around two hundred. Yeah, so uh, teams that might be good as well. Uh, the Gators, they've got two players that uh, looks like they'll be going to the draft next season. In uh, obviously we talked about before DMX and Cameron Millwall. This year Watch for the Gators. For well. I uh, think the Bulldogs will be pretty good next year. We have uh, three people on capping. We. I am still a Bulldog. <laughs> I haven't been drafted yet. Also, my last team that I'll throw into the ring for a team that might be good next year is. Syracuse Orange. I know they just switched their AD, oh, but yeah. they also have three 199s, one guy at 150. But two and, pure cent. Uh, J. Cole is true. a filler. Yeah. I didn't I didn't see that they were pure centers. If they had been word center. Yeah, Pretty I think good. we talked about this last week. I think we talked about this last week or then the episode where we focused on Caramello that they have two highly high in TP centers just mm. pure centers so maybe either of them maybe maybe one of them makes a change in their player build uh, yeah. slimming down to a power forward Obviously. Spot. shrinking one player that we well I mean you did it <laughs> yeah but I'm a robot so I can just get a new exoskeleton it's fine oh Okay. Another another team, of course, we'll have to mention with the transfers coming through are the Virginia Cavaliers. They'll now have another two stars to pair with DeAndre Paxter, who's the shoot star. Uh, Is Paxter still there? Yep. There. Jeez. How, how long has he been? Is he a senior now? He must be a senior now. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, yeah. he's been there so long, gee. I mean, it feels like Bamba's been in the league for ages, and he's only finally going. Yeah. No, junior Bamba next and... year, Paxter. Oh, hey, never mind. Experience too going into the season. So yeah, Paxter's a senior next year. Yeah, he's still in. The UCLA Bruins have uh, <clears throat> as well a nice and tidy roster for next year with Barack Osama, Chase Cloud and Primoz Sajek, who we are all excited about. Well, not necessarily, but me and Danger were earlier. Uh, maybe the talent is spread even farther wide this upcoming season. There's a lot of teams starting to take shape and getting their average TP very high. 
Yeah, I think this is uh, this was one of the seasons that has been the most equal. We had quite a lot of teams in the running for a title. The all the previous expansion teams have finally, well, not finally, but got their act together. There's a large amount of talent all around the league. Another really tight, tight um, season coming up. And I'd be surprised to see any one single team break the 60 win mark. I feel like, oh, I feel like again, I think the reason uh, that all of these teams have all these high TPE players is because what a lot of players do is once they get to 199 in their sophomore season, they just kind of spit it out. And I mean, I, I joined the league last year. I don't know if that's something that's been going on. But this year, if you look like like at least the top five in highest TP earners of our draft class, they are all third-year players. And that's a trend that I see continuing, at least how it is right now. So in average TP uh, right now, before the draft, after the offseason has officially started, uh, the Arizona Wildcats have a... 202 average TP per player. Uh, I am surprised to find out the Duke Blue Devils are at 116 average TP, but that is of course a given. Uh, uh, that is of course given with the high turnover in these past two seasons. Uh, the team I also mentioned, UCLA Bruins, 160 average TP. But behind the Arizona Wildcats, rounding out the top three are the Florida Gators and Gonzaga Bulldogs with 189 and 188 average TP, respectively. So we kind of hit the nail on the head there. Who Wait, will be the league MVP? Huh? Yeah? Oh, yeah, okay, okay, okay. Uh, who will be the league MVP next season? Season 38 for the NCAA. <laughs> Wildest guesses. Wildest guesses available. Only hot takes taken here. And we got some super hot special <clears throat> takes. Arthur, you go need Michigan State Spartans making the final. We're known for our Arthur, hot takes going here. Going to... <laughs> yeah, but last year I said that you go needs the best prospect oh, okay. and the Spartans are gonna make the national championship final. So, <laughs> hot takes, welcome. I have a very cold take. The MVP is going to be a scoring center. No way. Who's going to be the scoring well, center? Well, I don't easy. know. I don't know these players well enough. Mr. X for MVP. <clears throat> I'm going to go for... Oof. Stuff on. Is Starburn still going to be in the, in the league next year? For... Primo Zayek. Yeah. I like his name. It's Mallard Mallard. Will... Oh, he's still in? Yeah, will Adams Filler stay? He... I think so. He could be a um, backcourt nomination. Well, SF slash power forward, so backcourt my ass. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, I sure hope we get to talk about the Duke Blood. No, I actually don't. Uh, it's very refreshing uh, doing this podcast and not having... Uh, anyone mentioned the Duke Blue Devils in any shape or form? Because what even is a Duke Blue Devil? Like who's even on that team? I mean, it's so forgettable. Yeah. <laughs> is this like a um, Bentley's on the shop guy? Yeah, I, that's the only guy I know. Uh, I update Duke too, so I should know all of them. For next year, there There's will only be one player on the team. No, we. I know. I know one person who's not getting any TP for this podcast. Oh yeah, you all get TP. <laughs> <clears throat> I might have to rationalize. Ra ration, ration. Is this? Is this? Is that how you pronounce ration? When you ration, like yeah. uh, during yes. wartime, you ration food. Like yeah. All right. I'm gonna have to ration your. Uh, respective voice lines during the editing of this <laughs> video so we'll see who gets what tp but <laughs> oh, jokes on you i don't need it anyway jokes on you i i could use it 
Yeah, give so, it a Robo. I have no ulterior motive to making sure Robo gets as much TP as possible. <laughs> <laughs> Robotastic oh, yeah, Prime! Yeah. No, no reason at all. Drafted by the New York right. Rail. <laughs> and uh, now, the injured minutes at center. Pushes that uh, Ivancic gets drafted with first pick. <laughs> uh, if you were to choose, would you rather take a defensive center or the guy who averaged 35.8? I think it's I a mean, toss up, actually, to be honest. Yeah, you can go either I mean, way. <laughs> for the rail, probably a defensive center might yeah. fit a bit more, considering um, we've got Winchester scoring 900. At, who both score a fuck ton, but I mean you kind of need both anyway. Yeah, thirty five point eight won't translate that well to SBA anyways. So I mean, even it would probably translate. I mean, it depends how much, how many minutes. How you much get. did Winchester average? Twenty two. Didn't he have a fifty point game though? Yeah, he had a few fifty bombs. I remember he had like National one in like his first week. Yeah. yeah. He yeah, had a, so a 59-point yeah. game. Yeah. If I go to the rail, I'm riding the bench anyway, so I, I, yeah. I doubt I... Yeah, he had 59 against a uh, loss. You all want me to read out the Duke Blue Devils roster for next year? If you haven't paid yeah. attention. <laughs> I, I don't know if you were if you serious. <laughs> no, we <laughs> didn't. <laughs> Max, some of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I update them. I should know who's on the team. Yeah, yeah. but uh, the uh, off-season signees, the new signees were uh, MM Flex, who was known for La Jello Thrall previously in the NCAA. Uh, small yeah, forward, like a... Eden Empire, and uh, Taiwo. <clears throat> Bobby McBuckets. No, no, Bob no, 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 Buckets no, 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 no. defense. Yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> There's no. so many Buckets players. I don't. I mix them up. Pockets for everyone. Yeah, that's title. Totally right. You on Robo anyway? Hmm. What? What TP are you on Robo? Uh, after this week, yeah. or well, now since it's technically the next week, uh, four hundred and eight or six something. Yeah. Jesus. You're you're only sixty behind fucking deity. <laughs> 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 I can play point guard. Put me in, coach. <laughs> I mean, you're only two two hundred between uh, behind our starting center. Yeah, hey, I'm at three eighty one now, and this week I earned twenty five. So yeah, I'll be at sixty. I'll be at three sixty. We'll never obviously, obviously, I'm the star of the rail, so you'll have to pass to me. So. Oh yeah, yeah, obviously. Uh, we'll I'm passing. Get that passing rating up. <coughs> Will Cole um, get a new contract? Uh, or was, was he... I'll probably buff my handling at one point, because I don't want to turn it over a crap ton. Yeah, same. <laughs> I'm going strength and handling. Were there no uh, contract renewables for the rail this offseason? Uh, I think everyone got renewed. Oh. Got a nice little, nice little bonus as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you guys, that bonus was great. We got fuck tons of. Everyone got like a meal. Deity got two. <laughs> our entire team. Because he wasn't high enough or what? He needed it contract. the most, yeah. But I think uh, me, Debrat, and Cole are both on prime contracts starting from next season. <laughs> Rocky Young, but uh, he's a filler anyway. I would somewhat be opposed to. Robo joining the rail because uh, Robo had this plan earlier of me and him joining forces later in our career and if Robo is tied to the rail it's probably too much to uh, <coughs> consider another podcasting personality to join the roster. Oh no, it'll be fine because we'll be good next season so we'll have a low pick so you'll still be on the board. Oh right. <laughs> oh damn. But what How much CPU are you at right now? Uh, <laughs> Top, most, I think. So, maybe if I happen to be the top TP getter, maybe Are you donating? Goes, up. Uh, do you get any more from donating? If you yeah, do you a $10 like... donation, you can do it. I'll do one. Yeah, you get Once double a season. Big, so you get 
You get like 18 extra or something. Once a week. No, 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 just once a season. Oh, uh, yeah, once a season. I'm... So, yeah, I might consider, but probably not. Like, yeah, uh, you, don't, do you don't really need to. Yeah. I mean, in. <clears throat> but. So, what gave Donovan the 30 point TPE lead that he had? Yes. Yeah. It's whatever, like, if you got the spare money, it's yeah. not really a problem, just go ahead if you want. Mallard, Mallard, Dimitris, Marquis, Xavier, and Cameron Millwall are all ahead of JJ Harkelwood right now, but I think a couple of those guys already created their scouting profile, which I have not done out of respect for integrity, because who in their right mind would have a scouting profile for a guy who's still committing for a full year in college. That's not knocking those guys, they can do whatever they want, but for role-playing purposes I'm leaving it for mid-season or later in the season, because it would make a difference. Where, if, if we're making March, it shows a bit earlier in the season. If we're not making March, probably the 8 or whatever TP wouldn't have made the difference. Some yeah. dedication to the role play there. No, I also did mine yeah. later on in the season just because of our slow start. My scouting profile came like really late in the season. I think. Yeah, mine too. I did. A, I did mine like I think I actually did mine yeah. in my. I well, did I mine. Mean, in, like... I feel way better. I felt way better about doing it later in the season because that was when I was averaging like thirty points a game or something. Yeah, no. That's better than like doing it at the start of the season and averaging like nineteen last season. Man. Like, look at this guy. He's doing what? okay, I guess. Yeah, well, like... now it's just like, whoa, now he can score. Wow. <laughs> so I like did the... mine, like, the first week I joined the forum and then didn't claim it for until, like, four years later. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Well, that's a Man. decent approach. The first week of this NCAA season, I was, like, the first, like, the leader in scoring for, like, the first three games at three sims. And then afterwards, I just had sims where I couldn't score more than 20, and I was pissed off. And then I just never did my scouting profile, because my numbers were shit. I think I had my biography written, like, uh, in real life time, three or four weeks ago already, but that doesn't make a difference, basically, because... I'm was... just kind of lazy sometimes. You know how it is. Yeah, I was expanding on the stuff I wrote already in my first couple of point tests, so maybe... Um, biography is mainly so that you have a backstory, and it kind of stops once you get to... Did you guys read my backstory? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> uh, I think I read someone's I got tagged in. Most of uh, it. Off coast. Yeah, it was mine. Uh, I just... Uh, I, I <sighs> put it out a couple of days ago, like last week, but I didn't mind... I didn't want to tag all the people right away, but now that time's passed, if you're about to read it, you'll read it. Uh, and wanted to give a, a heartfelt thank you for everyone who's participated in my, well, who's made the uh, forum and SBA a very comfortable and fun place to hang around in. So, uh, but about my next year's development, uh, even if I was the top TP getter, uh, I in offensive not, in offensive attributes. I'm only gonna put one to free throws, and after the next year, next year's March, next off season. After this off season, I'll improve my passing to seventy. So it's not gonna make that big of a difference. Even though if even if I had the most TP of, of the next draft class. You're not improving your free throws. Uh, I'm already at 74. All right, yeah, that's fair. So the 75. I also have this thing where it needs to be a zero or five at the end, or I just get mad. Um, like sometimes I just bank TPE because I don't like the way it looks. <laughs> I don't care about that as much, but uh, there are sometimes like uh, we all know that after 70, it costs more to put attributes in it, so it would be pretty yeah. stupid to get like 72. Or something like that, no? So I'll be mainly improving my steals, fouls, physicals even more. Funny story, ending my last regular season with two or three foul outs in a row. With, against 
some poorer teams. I don't know how that happened. Maybe it was Robo once, but... Yeah, I called out against Tyrone once. Yeah, not a good day. <laughs> I lost the fucking game to the Huskies, otherwise I would have won the bet of daily. Yeah. That game I found out. lost the fucking Huskies. That... <laughs> Man. Huskies. Who was it? Wildcats. Oh no, we did lose one. Away at You say Wildcats like that shortens it at all. Right. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> also, same with Huskies. And that, that yeah, was a huge. <laughs> but both, both <laughs> that was Huskies were bad. Kentucky. Yes. We, we lost away at Kentucky, which would have fucking sealed it. Hmm. And then lost. There's three Wildcats. It's always like when in the standings you see Wildcats. Do you think I remember the division they. Yeah, yeah I was doing my <laughs> articles. It was like. <laughs> I had to go through all the Wildcats to find. I fucking hate Arizona. it. I used to. You're a bit of SBO, you know, there's some shit, but I used to do loads of like articles about like teams' results through the season and loads of like uh, their last 10 games and shit like that and power rankings. Um, it's fucking oh, yeah. nightmare trying to di get the fucking Wildcats. There's a few articles where I just didn't include any of the Wildcat or Huskies teams just as a protest. I do not blame you. They really, there's so many teams to choose from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why, why would the these people just select? Ah, I, I guess Kentucky is like uh, a lot of promising. But they used to be formatted differently. There used to be a space between like the wild and the cats, and then there used to be a hyphen between one of them, so you could actually tell hyphen, them apart. Hyphen space, Z at the end. Capital Anything. C. <laughs> it's <just> so annoying. <laughs> Out of my uh, out of Harker Woods last five games, he fouled out three times in the last oh. regular season. <laughs> so, <laughs> wow. that also, was the worst. Uh, all right, this lost to Connecticut. Uh, only positive plus minus on the squad, but fouled out in 23 minutes of play time. Some guy named Ulysses Ariboye Adebowale. Uh, oh, well, it was Shooty McShoot face. He had 9 out of 10 free throws made. So, yeah. Well, uh, oh, yeah, it's like win, 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 lose to, you, to fucking Yukon. <laughs> <laughs> Harkelwood had the highest, well, the best defensive efficiency of the team this year, and the team's plus minus uh, net net point gain went to shit whenever he had to sit. So <clears throat> maybe too much leaning on just one simple guy's shoulders, but yeah, well, what can you do? We can see what what the Harkelwood. Prime matchup win. <laughs> I think they won the game. Yes, yeah, in a lot of them. Yeah, I mean the last one's a home set, home for Duke, ninety to seventy-five. He had like three per almost perfect sims that were all ruined by Duke. It's pretty depressing. God, he's ass. Perfect. What's what's that? What's a perfect Noah. sim? Noah. The word you just didn't lose. Yeah, undefeated. But they they don't know yeah, about I, those in I, I West know, Virginia. Don't, we don't oh. have them in West Virginia. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was right over my head. Jesus. <laughs> Easiest joke of his life. And you didn't even <laughs> laugh. So, uh, yeah, it looks like Robotastic Prime with 36 points. Uh, JJ Harkawood with five personal fouls. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Pretty even across the board, I guess. Maybe Robo should have sh shrunk mid-season, so I would have had a fairer matchup, but probably wouldn't have made a difference. Oh, uh, I, I actually it? did, and they said it would be put in at the end. Nah. Because it's only off-season, I think. Balls. Your first game was pretty competitive. 20. JJ had 16. Oh. That was, like, really early in the season. Wasn't yeah, it? Robo yeah. didn't yeah. have a software update ready back then. 
Uh, Robo. Yeah, I was still doing Windows Intel. <laughs> Windows, Windows, Windows 76, and you just kept getting the error message. Yeah. I upgraded to Windows 10 there. Was it a voluntary I... update or one they just did for you? Yeah, it was an automatic one. Ah, uh, so you could have sued them for TPE. Oh, there they go. <laughs> Too good. I, I want my Windows 76 back. All right, that's that should be all for our whatever you should call this 18 of the week, two hours of the week, four hours of the week. Uh, thank you everyone for an enjoyable season 37 of NCAA, and uh, good luck to everyone going to the pros next year. Uh, it's gonna be goodbye from me at Okocha Star, and thank you for joining. A cryptic pancake. My pleasure. Always fun to be on the show. Robotastic Prime. Yeah. Bye. And of course, as always, well, nearly always, Danger Golding. Yeah, good to be here again. See you next week. All right. Uh, thank you so much for listening, and we'll hope to catch you whatever week we'll be recording next. Bye. <laughs>